actually, we just had a group who split off to form their own independent comic company, Ghost Machine. And this is an interesting one because it's Ghost Machine created by a bunch of these guys, published through Image Comics, and it's a focus on four universes of creator-owned comics and stuff like that. And look, the names here are pretty heavy hitters. Uh, Brad Metzler. Okay, don't know who that is. I don't know everybody. But Jason Fabic's huge. Gary Frank's huge. Brian Hitch. Jeff Johns. Lamont McGee, I don't know. Francis Manipal, I don't know. Peter Tomasi, I know. And this Maytal shoot, I don't know. But definitely some heavy hitters who are leaving conventional comics. I think a lot of these guys were more DC guys. Leaving to form their own comic company. Which obviously is leaving DC in some dire straits. Especially when you have Jeff Johns leaving. It's quite a big deal over there. To go and do their own thing. And specifically, they are not doing superhero stories right necessarily they talk about that here a little bit i'll read into it so it says at its launch the creators stressed that unlike the work they had done in the past for publishers such as dc comics the books of the four shared universes established by the company's first official release in january 2024 ghost machine number one would not be set in the superhero genre but in other genres such as science fiction historical fantasy post-apocalyptic fiction and horror so they're leaving behind the superhero genre which is uh, an interesting move that I don't really fault them for because if you look at the indie scene today, a lot of it is not cape stories. Like the majority, I'd say, are not cape stories. And I don't want to just say that it's like a manga thing because early comics, you know, very few of them were superhero stories as we know them today. They did a lot of horror and western and stuff like that. But I think we're tr trying to sort of get a return to that type of thing where. We're going to leave behind what's maybe a bit stagnant at this point of just superhero capes and tights and stuff like that and do something a little different, which I can't fault them for. Um, it's an interesting move. And to find out a little bit more about that, we have the trailer here for Ghost Machine, which we want to watch together and kind of break down. So let's start. <laughs> Also, just to start, that's a little bold to say creators you know, because I mean, I think you're, you're, I think this is part of a, a comic book creator thing where you maybe you think you're a little bit more famous than you are. But regardless, I did know some of them, so they get some credit there. Let's, let's keep going. Not bad, little live action trailer type thing. Ghost Machine is not just a creator-owned comic book, it's a creator-owned company. Ghost Machine is unlimited creative potential. We are creating the world and the characters from scratch. We have the creative freedom to push ourselves beyond what we've ever done before. We get to tell the stories we want to tell. We want to create iconic characters with massive epic adventures. We believe in the power of a good story. But we want to create beyond superheroes. Yeah, that's... One of the important lines there. Want to create beyond superheroes. Um, I think we'll sort of see a little bit more of that here. Let's keep going. We're introducing four universes. Rook, Family Odysseys. We have our horror universe. And the Unnamed is a group of characters that have existed throughout American history that you've just never heard of. The two books we've done so far set in this universe are Geiger and Junkyard Joe. Geiger is a man who's become a monster to protect the people he loves. So the Geiger story, that seems to want to be the one that they're promoting the most here out of all these. I mean, as you've seen so far, I think Geiger has taken up the majority. Um, it seems to be, you know, I don't want to judge before we start reading it, obviously, but it seems to be a little bit generic. I don't know. Sort of just a nuclear bomb radiation dude. I think we've seen quite a bit of that, but the art here is fantastic. I mean, obviously huge professionals. And so... I imagine it'll be good. Uh, I'll probably get it, but I imagine it'll be good, but it does not wow me necessarily. Story is his journey to trying to become a man again. Junkyard Joe is a piece of military equipment who thinks he's a person and comes home to find a welcome or a family and finds nothing. It's 
That story actually sounds really interesting. The Junkyard Joe thing. I like that a lot. I'm a sucker for like robot stories. So I really like this concept of. Let's play that back. It was his journey to trying to become a man again. Junkyard Joe is a piece of military equipment. Yeah, this piece of military equipment looks like a Vietnam robot who thinks he's a man. Who thinks he's a person and comes home to find a welcome or a family and finds nothing. It's actually yeah, that's kind of tragic. So, yeah, but I, I do like that story idea, right? This robot thinks he's a man, thinks he's a military thing, comes home um, to be unwelcome. And I think you can see some parallels there from other like Vietnam veterans in there welcome after the war so i think that's interesting action packed it's emotional and it's kicking off the entire world of the unnamed like red coat immortal mercenary bit of a tool it isn't just set in the revolutionary war um this one here i feel like this is always like an independent comic world they always have this character like the immortal warrior type character my mind immediately goes to valiant um who i think he was called what the the eternal warrior um, so yeah, it doesn't interest me as much, uh, but not to say that it, that it won't be good or anything like that, but America and Britain, there's company. 350 years of alternative magical American history to play with. Rook is its own book and its own universe that's separate from. I want to say with whatever this universe comes out to be is I'm probably going to get it because Jason Fabic is like an amazing artist, but let's see what he's got laid out for us here the unnamed rook wears this mask that looks like a bird head that allows him to connect with birds as a spies as a weapon as he's trying to escape this dying planet francis yeah, that's a, a pretty good story pitch too um, i like that i think the bird helmet talks to birds things a little weird but i like the idea of a man trying to escape a dying planet it's kind of kind of like wally vibes right like stranded trying to get away from this place that but i'm all alone and you know what can i do with with trash and scraps but let's see what this is this this is, i think is going to be a fantastic four type of thing let's see this manipal and i are doing the rockefellers within the family odyssey group of books the best place to hide when you're in a witness protection program perhaps is through a different time each universe has okay didn't get much on that um look i just want to say too this person's popped up a few times Say whatever you want. Say whatever you want to say. I see this. I see a red flag. I think if the company's going to have problems, this is going to be the problem. Just putting it out there. So much in it, and it, all of them, all of them come from a character-driven place. We have the greatest artists out there. Some of the best storytellers you can find. There's somebody else that just signed on that I really want to talk about, but I cannot do it. Yet. And we're going to take it to another level. There's plenty of room for new story. It's not just cool explosions. Heroes, yes. Capes, no. This is beyond A-list. We just want to create the best books on the stands. Yeah. Um, And I don't know how well they're going to do. It seems like they're going to do well. I mean, that, that's all sounded pretty good. They've got top-tier talent working on it, obviously. Um, the stories sounded at least entertaining enough. My problem here is that what do we have there's something i was reading here gosh where was it i can have to jump around and try and find it here this might just have to be like a trust me bro type of thing but i had something pulled up i can't find anymore but it was pretty much saying that a lot of these characters are meant to be sort of springboards into other media like movies or tv shows and stuff like that and they remarked at how many of these creators had previously worked in TV or media, different media companies and things. And if that's the case, I'm a little bit less inclined to interact with this stuff and read it. Like, if, if that's the case, then I don't think this will be successful. Because we've seen that before from typically the newbie progressive comic book creators who want to create a property specifically just so that they can get out of comics and into movies and tv shows using comics as a springboard i think it was mags who we talked about wednesday who did that with um she had a show 
She had a show. What was it called? Vagrant Queen. That was like the worst reviewed show in history. Um, and I feel like if they try and do that, like some of these could be end up being really good. So I don't want to say that like that's going to be bad or anything. But I think if you're creating with this idea that we're going to turn this into a multimedia IP instead of just focusing on comics, that could be bad. But I don't think this is necessarily a problem, right? I think this is sort of an inevitable. It's an inevitable um, end, I guess, to the American comic book industry. And we've seen stuff like this before, like with, if you remember a few years ago, a ton of big creators moved to Substack away from Marvel and DC, like James Tinney and the fourth, who is an Eisner winning writer. It had different people I'm trying to find all the creators that were on here. Solid and Ahmed was one. He's pretty big. James Tinian. They had uh, Jonathan Hickman, who's obviously a huge writer. So they had some pretty good people jump ship. And then, yes, yeah, Scott Snyder also jump ship um and he's just doing independent stuff now so a lot of big creators are doing this type of thing and are having this realization like ryan otley who you know is creator of invincible or the artist on invincible um he had a few quotes here he's talking to jamie palmiotti who i like as well where jimmy asks all of us that love the medium should be doing everything we can to get others into the wonderful world of comics what are your ideas which Ryan replies, companies need leadership that know what good is. Creators need to create good properties with long runs if they want a strong fan base. It needs the least amount of unchangeable creative teams, less focus on variant covers, more amazing cinematic feeling stories. And this is a shot too at a lot of the sort of predatory business practices that a lot of distributors are doing to comic book stores of forcing them to buy x amount of variant covers or x amount of books in order to get an exclusive variant cover to artificially inflate the sales numbers for whatever book they have but what he's saying here is what i've been saying on this page for the last several years when it comes to comic book properties and that's you've got to have consistent team you've got to have a long form story with actual character changing and an actual ending pretty much you have to do the opposite of what's been going on since the beginning of comic books. We can't have constant resets at issue one, one after another, swapping hands to a different creative team like every six months, and every single change in character progression that a character goes through getting a reset every single time we have a new issue one. That's a huge problem because if you're a reader, what incentive do you have to read? It's just going to be changed again by the end of the year. And that's where manga, I think, really has such a strong foot in the industry, is that that's how they operate, is they have one creative team, typically. They have one story that they're telling, extremely focused, and it builds on each other. It has strong characters and then a strong ending, and Invincible is much the same way. And I think that's, again, one reason that it was so successful. And he remarks here that it's, it's impossible to have that anywhere other than a creator owned story and that's exactly true and then he remarks as well there are a lot of things i want to see more of besides standalone long form properties i want to see more one shots good anthologies and more artists writing for themselves and the one shots i definitely agree with not to contradict what i just said but it's also fine to have a story that just exists and then ends right it's one story, it's one book, it exists, then it's over. It's not going to be revived, it's not going to be rebooted or anything like that. It was just good, and now it's done. And I think a lot of the stories that I'm writing and a lot of the other independent comic book creators write are one of the two. It's either I'm just going to write one story, then I'm going to just be done with it. Narwhal that I talked about Wednesday does this with a lot of his books. Or it's going to be kind of like, like the Cardinal book that, I, that I'm doing. It's going to be a longer form thing where it's going to be this one story that has an ending. Um, then he said here, more artists writing for themselves. Uh, yes and no. I think one thing that we've seen in the indie scene is that a lot of artists are artists and not writers. <laughs> and so there's been a sort of crisis of mediocrity, I think, among some of the indie books. Not all of them. Um, but a lot of the first-time creators or, or people, younger people especially, who 
have been drawing comics and now they want to just write their own it's like there's there is some that goes into that uh to actually be a good writer but i think everything that he's saying here is absolutely true and uh creators should keep in mind but he's not the only one i have a, a few here so we had him got a few from patrick zercher who i don't like very much but he's got a few insightful quotes i think because he is a comic book professional he says i lost respect for superhero comics a writer once told me he did no research didn't read a single back issue for a title he knew nothing about i wish he hadn't told me it flopped but it was so disillusioning i knew then the characters that once interested me were dead and this is something that i think fans have been saying now for years especially post 2015 that there's so many writers out there and just creators in general who quite obviously have nothing but either contempt for the property or contempt for the reader, which I think is the only justification for what Pat's talking about here, is that these creators look at these superhero projects now and don't see them as heroes and important figures in um, either, I'd say, American lore as well as just uh, pop culture in general. They see them as either an avenue that I can self-insert myself into a story, an avenue that I can springboard into something else, or just, I don't know, something I can put on a resume that I wrote this story for Marvel while I go do something else. Um, it's quite clear that the people who love comics are not working at the big two. They are doing independent work because why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they do independent work selling either direct to consumer or trying to remove a step there? Um, and do focus on what they love, right? Which is making books that people are actually going to want to read. Let's see. And this is something he said as well. He said, my God, CG and I are coming from this, uh, from an opposite perspective. CG being Comicsgate. He says, they still give an, an F. They still give a fuck about Batman, the X-Men, G.I. Joe, or whatever. They don't want something else. They just want the same stuff. They want 1990 all over again go away and this is something too that's very interesting in a sort of shift that i've seen people go on here recently because he is right the comic skate people of which i consider myself a part of for a long time have been saying like you know you're destroying our characters da da da, da. we don't want your hands on x-men or batman or whatever we want these good stories again but as I've been saying, like I mentioned, as I've been saying for years now, is that I think we need to jump ship from all that and leave it behind. Um, because look, I I do want good stories for these characters, but I am willing to lose them, right, and just completely abandon what we, what's going on right now for other stuff. And I think a lot of, of CG has gone that direction too um because look if i want to read a good batman story there are plenty of them out there if i want to read good x-men there are plenty of them out there i don't necessarily need it today which is why i've been saying for a long time we need to do we need to, to stop doing batman books we need to stop doing spider-man we need to stop doing daredevil on and on and on again because they're getting tarnished and ruined so just get rid of them do a time skip, do whatever you got to do, but like let Bruce Wayne retire, let all these characters be done, finish their run. Like, I've, I've, what I, my recommendation has been get some of these top tier creators back, and we do one final run for the character, whether it takes a year, two years, whatever. Let's do one final Batman book, one final Daredevil, whatever, and just finish it off so that we can move on to something else that might spark some excitement again, which is desperately needed in the space today because it is essentially non-existent but i thought that was interesting i got one more from patrick he says the greatest thing that could happen to american comics is if marvel and dc went broke if people who made comics had to make something else no fallback no cop out no kidding themselves you really have talented people doing something like what if batman was a werewolf it's absurd and yeah i think he's right as well the best thing that could happen is if these companies completely go under, it's handed off to other people, or these people actually have to try 
Like they actually have to give a shit about it and actually produce something good again. Because there is so much garbage out there. Like, yeah, what if Batman was a werewolf? And what about these other 100 Batman stories? And let's do a Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur book. It's like there is so much garbage out there. It's nonsense. And like I said before, too, in previous videos, all this crap, if you want to keep making it, that's fine. Send it direct to digital. Don't even print it. Don't even put it on the shelf for me to see. I don't want to see that, man. You know, get that out of my face. Um, and then only print the good stuff. And even then, I'd say only print the trades. Go digital for everything else. Just print the trades. Because the prices you're charging for just a single floppy issue are insane. I don't think it justifies itself. And I got one more here. Mark Millar. Mark Miller. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to be honest. But he's got two separate tweets here that were back to back that I thought were interesting. Start at the bottom. He says, comics need to regroup, rethink, and enjoy a new renaissance like the 60s, 80s, thousands. The possibilities are endless and the characters are famous and are more famous and loved than ever. They just need to remember how great they are. So he's coming from a different angle, the opposite of what we just saw, where he's saying, take these characters that we know are great and do and, and reinvent or do something new with them. So he's saying, keep the Batmans, keep the Supermans, whatever. These characters are great. We need to remember how great they are. And I applaud the thought. My only concern is that there is no leadership in place to actually do that. And right now, it seems to be that the only realistic option is to just burn it down and restart. I thought that was interesting. Then he says here that he used to read 20 plus American published books a month. Now he just reads one or two around 2016. And I think, yeah, I think post 2015 is where a lot of the problems started. Um, but yeah, the business has taken a wrong turn, as he says here, and they need to admit that they've taken a wrong turn. Um, you can't sell people what they don't want. And instead, because good, people aren't going to buy that anymore. They're going to move somewhere else. And they've moved almost exclusively to Japanese comics. They've completely taken over the industry to where, like, one, like Demon Slayer every month outsells the entire American comic book industry. And it's more than just that. There are multiple books that outsell the entire American comic book industry combined by just one manga title. It's insane. Um, because people aren't getting what they want. They're getting self-inserts. They're getting lectures and politics and stuff like that, that they don't want, um, which is a big problem, obviously. And then what he mentions here, I think... I think we all see this because if anybody's been to a comic book store lately, it's pretty depressing. I mean, the stores that I've gone to, I've seen them change from a comic book store to like a comic and game store to like a game store that has a comic book section. And that's the direction they're all turning because people today aren't buying comics. They're more interested in tabletop games or card games or D&D &D or something like that or, or manga as well. Comics are being shoved out. And what sucks is they put themselves there to begin with because they used to be everywhere in stores, gas stations, whatever. But then they had the great idea of, well, what if we segregate ourselves from everyone and just put ourselves in comic book stores that nobody goes to? And you have to go out of your way to buy your product at instead of just having it conveniently be there when you're shopping for everything else. Um, obviously, big mistake. But yeah, the comic book stores are adapting because they have to. But it's sad that they have to. It's sad that the comic book industry is putting them in that position, that they have to do that. So it's interesting seeing this shift. I think indie comics are going to become more popular than ever. I think it's going to give opportunities to some smaller creators to make an impact. But I think the majority of it is going to be consumed by the pros, obviously, because they're already made names for themselves. Um, but it'll be an interesting shift to see how Marvel and DC adapt that because at this point they're pretty much dead, right? They're, they're pretty much done for. And I think it's only going to get worse. I don't think it's going to get any better.